Good morning. Welcome to Park Avenue Christian Church. Uh, we have some announcements. Uh, remember to order your Easter flowers. Uh, forms are available on the table in the narthex. Uh, Wednesday the 8th, uh, power pack, 6 p.m. for the meal. 6.30 to 7.30, lessons and music. Thursday the 9th, retirees breakfast. Uh, reminder to set your clocks forward an hour before bedtime on the 11th. Uh, Sunday the 12th, please turn in your flower orders. And CMF is going to have a breakfast Saturday, March 18th at 8 a.m. And once again, reminder about the setting the clocks forward on the 11th. I found a annoying crease in my Bible when I was preparing for today, and often I will use Psalm 19 as a greeting. Uh, but I found the crease happened to be uh, along with a bookmark from when I had the privilege to be elder May 26th of 2019. Um, the message that day was when you can't see God's hands, trust his heart. And the lesson came from 1 Peter. I'm going to share two verses with you. Uh, chapter 5, verse 7. Cast all your worries upon him because he cares for you. And verse 10. The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory through Christ Jesus will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you after you have suffered a little. To him be dominion forever. Amen. Well, in finding that uh, verse from the past, I had misplaced my one for today. I'm sorry. All right. <clears throat> Gracious God, gentle in your power and strong in your tenderness, you have brought us forth from the womb of your being and breathed into us the breath of life. We know that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from you. Feed our deep hungers with the living bread that you give us in Jesus Christ. May Jesus promise where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Be fulfilled in us. Through the Holy Spirit, make us a joyful company of your people, so that with the faithful in every place and time, we may praise and honor you, God most high. Amen. <laughs>
go by. I don't know if you ever think much of, uh, if you've ever been on the receiving end of one of those sirens, then you know that hardly ever is it good stuff. So when I hear a siren like that, I always have to think about pausing and praying just for a moment for whoever that siren is going to, fire department, first responders, keep them in your prayers. They are at a point where they need a little assistance. We have a couple new prayer concerns today. Um, Cindy asks that we pray for a friend of hers named Judy. She's uh, dealing with cancer with health concerns. Um, Our grandsons have asked that we pray for a classmate of theirs. His name is Cole. He's a high school student, and he's dealing with cancer. You uh, know the other folks we've got on here, Gene Smith and Raylene Rao's brother and uh, the Renaults for their family, and this list will be sent out to you tomorrow. So please keep your prayers lifted up because uh, God is listening to you And that is one of his greatest blessings. Will you bow your heads with me? Our living God, wherever those sirens are going, we ask that you be with not only the first responders and the firemen, but be with the people whose lives are are in crisis in this moment. We ask that you be with those folks, young and old, who are dealing with health issues. Touch them with your presence. Let them know of your love. Let them know that you are with them. And if it be your will, heal them. Lord, please be with our nation and our world. Be with the situation with Russia and Ukraine. And if it be possible, please help them find peace. Other places around our world where there is hunger and poverty, where there are folks without clean water to drink or health care systems, please be with them. Touch them with your assistance, with your spirit, with your love. Finally, Lord, we present ourselves to you. If we sort of haven't paid much attention to you lately and we've forgotten to lift up to you our sins and ask for forgiveness, please touch us with your mercy. Remind us of your love and forgive us. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Will the kids come forward, please? Okay, the first thing I want you to do is look out at all those people and tell me if you see any people who you think might be stressed. See anybody who might be stressed? What's that mean when somebody gets stressed? You ever been stressed? Pardon? If you get real mad, it causes stress. And if somebody's mad at you, it causes stress. What else? Let's say that I'm supposed to clean my room and I don't want to. Does that cause stress? What else causes stress? Yeah, something that's coming at that you don't like. Like what? I don't like going to the dentist, but you all like going to the dentist, don't you? Yeah. See? So, oh, no. So it causes stress for some of us, but not all. And the same thing doesn't cause stress for everybody. There's a scripture passage that Jesus has something to say that's really helpful. It's in Matthew chapter 11. He said, come to me, all of you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Jesus says, if we're worried and carrying heavy loads, we can go to him in prayer. He will help us. He will help us carry our load. Who knows what this is? What? It's a dinosaur. What kind? A stress ball. What do you do with it? 
When you're angry or stressed, you squeeze this, and it's supposed to help you deal with your anger or your stress, right? Have any of you ever used one? Did it help? It helped. Sometimes it helps because if I'm busy squeezing this thing, maybe I won't worry so much about whatever it is that's worrying me. So today, guess what I have for you? A stress dinosaur. So, what are you going to do the next time you get stressed? You can squeeze it, but is there anything else you can do? Pray to God is a really good idea. You bet you get to keep them. They're all hermetically sealed. So what I want you to remember is if life gets tough, if... <laughs> It's always fun to see when they stop listening. <laughs> when life gets hard, remember to go to God and ask God for help, okay? And squeeze your dinosaur. You did. Thank you for coming up. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah.
good job, kids, and thanks to uh, all of the musicians and leaders who helped us out there. My granddaughter is in her first year of show choir. And trying to be supportive, I asked her if it'd be okay if I got up and sang with them during their show piece, and she said no. <laughs> but part of show choir is singing and dancing all at the same time. And I've let her know how impressed I was that she could do both things at once. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who comes from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from God's presence. And Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. And Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with any, everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? And Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? How can these things be? Today I want to talk to you about something, and that question should be foremost in our minds as we go through this process. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, and he went to Jesus in the night to ask questions about faith. And the third chapter of John's Gospel presents Nicodemus as a sincere, a be, a sincere believer in God. He was a Pharisee, and that group of Jews had dedicated their entire lives to trying to follow all the rules that God put out. Nicodemus broke with his peers to come and talk to Jesus. And he asked a question that still plagues seeking Christians in 2023. Nicodemus wondered about salvation. And Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Did you notice something in the scripture passage? Twice Nicodemus asked Jesus questions, and each time Jesus gave an answer that didn't seem to be directly connected with the question. Jesus presented some information that Nicodemus needed, but he didn't make it easy. Nicodemus was confused, and as you probably remember, there followed a conversation between the two about salvation, about being born again, about the Holy Spirit, and I wonder after listening to that, how you and I are doing in our own faith walks. And it's a question you can ask yourself. Faith walks is one of the ways we refer to our relationship with God. And the term implies that our faith walk is not simply a decision we make one day to be a Christian, but instead a faith walk is a journey, a process, a walk through our life that includes God. Our faith walk is something in which we're involved every day, year after year. And I don't care how old you are, this goes on for our entire lives. You also know that relationships are like that. If you want a relationship to stay strong, do you know what you have to do? Put in time on the relationship. Communicate, talk share experiences, share moments. Over time, relationships change. And if given time and attention, relationships grow and become strong. It's interesting to study the faith walk of some of the, uh, the people in the Bible. Abram, for instance. God 
confused the languages at the Tower of Babel, remember? He made it so they couldn't communicate, so they would break apart and start try, stop trying to build this tower to heaven. Abraham lived 10 generations after that. What we know about young Abram is that he was married to Sarai, and soon she's going to be called Sarah, and he's going to be called Abraham. And we don't know much about him before this event in Genesis 12.1. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. And from that evolved Abram's, Abraham's faith walk. Did you notice something though? Abraham's faith walk required some commitment from him at the beginning and in the middle and throughout his whole life. And guess what's required of us in our faith walk? Some commitment at the beginning, at the middle, all through our life. Abram was 75 years old when this happened. But when God told Abram to pack up everything and journey where God instructed, Abraham just packed up and went. Is your faith so strong? The Apostle Paul explains Abraham's faithful actions by referencing a sentence in Genesis 15, 6. And Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. And that's a curious statement. Abraham, Abraham believed the Lord. Can you remember what your faith walk was like when you were a kid? I can't. I can't hardly remember when I was a young adult or even into adult. I can't remember the specifics about my faith walk. But I do remember this. I always had and even still have all sorts of questions about God. About God's nature, about God's love, about God, how God goes about doing his creating. Questions about God. And even if the questions were private in the back of my mind, we tend to wonder about questions just like Nicodemus did. Like, what's heaven like? How do I get to heaven? How do I know when I'm saved? What must I do to respond to God? If I'm in a relationship with God, what's that mean for the way I live my life? Those questions are part of our faith walk. It's how we sort of Put, our play, put ourselves into place where we need to be. And the way we process those questions has an effect on the way we live our faith. We evolve in our faith, and even the practice of our faith changes during our years. Can you think of anybody you know who used to be very, very active in their faith, but then something happened, and they just sort of slipped away? Think about all the persons who were baptized here at Park Avenue Christian Church over the last, I don't care, 10, 15, 20 years, 25 years, 30. Where are they all now? Are they all actively involved in their walks of faith? Life happens. Things change. People alter the focus of their lives. During everyone's lives, plans change, families change, new jobs arise. In short, life evolves and our relationships change. Even our relationships with God change. Remember Nicodemus? Nicodemus lived his life as a very strong Jewish believer, as a Pharisee, one of those who dedicated their lives to living as God wants. First, Nicodemus came looking for answers. And then Nicodemus tried to stand up to his peers. Nicodemus, who had gone to Jesus before and who was himself a Pharisee, asked, our law does not judge people without first giving them a hearing to find out, if what they are to find out what they're doing, does it? He was asking the other Pharisees. He was trying to defend Jesus. And the other Pharisees replied, surely you are not also from Galilee, are you? Search and you will see that no prophet is to arise from Galilee. As Nicodemus learned, and in your own faith walks, as you've probably learned, 
Our faith walks are not always easy. We'll think we'll be doing okay, and then we'll hear a, a song, for instance, that make us think of God in a new way, or we'll get in a conversation with some friends, and we'll see that they don't believe the same way we believe, and it causes us to question. Do you remember Joseph of Arimathea coming to take Jesus off the cross and burying him? Do you remember? And do you remember where, who, according to the Gospel of John, was with him? This same Nicodemus. He came in the night asking. He argued for Jesus and got shouted down. And at the end, he helped bury our Savior. This morning, during the second week of Lent, I'm wondering if it's not a good time for you and me to evaluate our faith walks. Do you feel like you're making progress with your faith walk? Or maybe you feel like your faith walk has ground to a halt or your walk of faith has stagnated. Perhaps your relationship with the Lord hasn't changed for many, many years. Maybe you've had new revelations and new thoughts recently. Maybe you hear the call of Christ in a manner that's new to you. Or maybe, maybe you are sustaining your faith just trying to hold a level that you held when you were a kid or where, when you were baptized. Or It isn't about judging anybody's faith walk because we're all different. Your faith walk is between you and the Lord. Luke 17, 5, the apostles of Jesus realized that they needed help in their faith walks, and they asked Jesus to increase our faith. As for me, the episode reported in Mark 9, 14, 29 speaks of the ups and downs of my faith walk and maybe yours. In this instance, a desperate father brought his son to Jesus to be healed of what sounded like epilepsy. And first the man approached the disciples and they couldn't heal the boy. They couldn't help the boy. So the worried man took his son to Jesus and asked Jesus to help. He said, have pity on us, Lord, and help us if you possibly can. And yes, said Jesus, if you yourself can, everything is possible for the person who has faith. And the father at once cried out, I do have faith, but not enough. Help me have more. That, I guess I should point up there, that has been my cry through my entire faith walk. I do have faith, God, but not enough. Help me have more. I hope as you walk through your life in faith, that is uh, a prayer that's similar to yours too, to asking that your faith be strengthened through the Spirit of God. Lord, I do have faith, but not enough. Help me have more. Amen. Okay, I got a question for you. What is Spanish food? Have you ever gone and eaten at a Spanish restaurant? I've gone to a Mexican restaurant. I've gone to a Cuban restaurant. I've gone to Thai restaurants and Chinese and Japanese. I've never gone to a Spanish restaurant. The reason I ask is our son's family is going to receive a, a foreign exchange student from Spain this coming week. And this foreign exchange student, along with our middle grandchild, both like to cook. So this uh, student is, has promised William that he's going to teach him how to, sp how to make real Spanish food. But I don't know what real Spanish food is. I thought of Spanish rice, but I thought I only showed my own ignorance. So I don't know what Spanish food is, but I hope soon that I'm going to learn. I hope soon, as you come to the table, that you get to learn something new. As, as Jesus called you, as Jesus invited you, as Jesus died for our sins, which we remember in the emblems, 
I hope that you learned something new. I don't know what it should be. I don't know what it will be. All I know is I and I hope you are open, open to learning something new. And if through communion, the Spirit of God can touch you and say to you, oh, but here, by the way, you're going to need this new little nugget of information. May you be blessed. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. With grateful hearts, O God, we come to Christ's table, remembering that you spoke creation into existence and pronounced it good, remembering that you called servants to make your word known and declared your reign, remembering that you effected salvation through Jesus Christ and reconciled us to us, uh, to, to you. Be known to us now through the gift of your spirit in the breaking of bread and drinking of cup. Renew your image within us. Restore our trust in your love. Refresh our spirits for care and service. Join us with all your people everywhere in joyous praise of your everlasting love. And now as Jesus taught his disciples, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
time to collect our offering. Uh, the uh, actually the trays for that are at the uh, entrance to the sanctuary. Uh, shows the verse from First Peter four verse ten uh, for our offering. Like good stewards of the multicolored grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Uh, this is a uh, audience participation part of the service. In a minute, I'm going to ask um, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Don't tell me yet. Just get yourselves ready to answer that question because it's kind of an important question. So, give it a little thought. I'm going to ask you if you have done so just to raise your hand. It'll be simple. Nobody will notice except you and, well, these people and, and well, God. But all you got to do is just, and you won't, I won't even make you lift it up very long. So, if you are ready for the participation portion of the service, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, please lift up your hand. Congratulations, all of you. You can put it down now. If you have not, and you need more information, or you need more input, or the Spirit is leading you to do so, either contact the office and we'll talk, or if the Spirit has made you ready, come forward as we stand and sing this song. Will you join me, please? You all don't need this because I know you all got it figured out. You're going to know what you know what you're going to do this week. You're going to go to this class and listen to this teacher, that class, and listen to that teacher. You're going to go to work and you're going to kind of do what you did last week. You're going to do what you did last week. You're going to you're going to take care of business. If you're retired, you're going to maybe go to the retirees thing on Thursday and you might be watching prices right at the right time or see how well Vanna can turn the keys. You might take care of your house and do your dishes and get your yard ready for spring. You've got it figured out. You know what you're going to do this week. You know how many times you're going to have to shower, how many times you're going to have to shave, how many times you're going to have to answer the question, what do you want for supper? You know what you're going to do this week. You've got it all figured out. And then stuff happens. Two weeks ago, it was cold. I got in my van. I turned on the heat. I was getting heat out of the passenger side, but not the driver's side, and it was cold. So I started thinking to myself, oh, no, and I called a mechanic and made an appointment. The next day, I got into it, and it worked fine. I fixed it. And then a couple, three days later, I got out, and there was heat on my side and no heat on the passenger side. And I do not yet know if I fixed that yet. The point being, life throws curves at you. 
constantly. Life throws curves at you, and your plans get tossed out the window, and you have to come up with something new in the moment. So prepare yourselves, specifically. Prepare yourselves for doing good in the name of the Lord. You do not know when you're going to stumble across somebody who needs a, an encouraging word, who needs a smile, who needs a door held open for them or help with their groceries. You don't, you don't know. You do not know when you're going to have the opportunity to do something to help somebody else in the name of the Lord. So prepare yourselves. Get ready so that when that opportunity comes, you can take care of it. And you can be a blessing to them, to yourself, and to the kingdom of God on earth. Be ready. Amen. Amen.